This video is brought to you by BossRootin.com. Fight me, a fearless expression. What are you willing to fight for? And PowerPerformanceProducts.com, where you can receive $10 off your purchase of Body Storm and Body Effects. Hello and welcome to our inaugural episode of MMA Today. What's different about our show is we want to come to local gyms, bring you guys inside look into stars like Dan Henderson. We're joined here today by the legend himself at Team Quest here in Temecula, California. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have such a legend on our inaugural episode here. Well, no worries, no worries. So uh, what were you guys doing here today in practice? Talk about practice a little bit quick. Uh, today we just you know, had a basic uh, you know, MMA practice, focused on a little bit of stuff against the wall, little takedowns and, and uh, you know, control on the wall, and, and, uh, and then went round. So. Team Quest basics. Yeah, it was just a lot of the basics that we do here, so. Obviously, you're set to take on John Jones in a few months, but quickly, I wanted to recap. Did you catch the UFC on Fox 3 event with uh, Nate Diaz? I did, I did. It was, uh, Pretty good little fight. What did you think about Nate's performance? Uh, he looked great. Yeah, he definitely uh, looked good, and, and you know, he's definitely been improving over the years, for sure. Yeah, I mean, as we saw, he uses incredible boxing setup, this, this great guillotine choke. Um, what did you think also about the uh, co-main event? Johnny Hendricks and uh, Josh Koscheck. There was a little controversy. How did you score that fight? Uh, you know, uh, I, I probably had uh, Koscheck winning the fight. You know, was, I, I'm a fan of Johnny Hendricks and, and you know, and you know, I, I think uh, it was a round apiece until the third round and, and Koscheck definitely controlled that third round. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, uh, that's how I scored it. So I was a little bit surprised, but it was, you know, three fairly close rounds. Yeah, the third was definitely the most dominant, I thought, in Koscheck's favor. Right. And the other two could have gone. Hendricks reminds me a lot of you in, in a lot of sense. Of course, he's throwing the left hand instead of the right, but he's got right. good wrestling base and, and likes to throw that big, that big left. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, you know, it, it didn't look like he, he really got it off too well, you know, in his fight with Koscheck and... and uh, yeah, you know, you know, I was waiting for him to land it pretty well, but he never really uh, landed it uh, in the right spot, I should say. You know, Koscheck's eye was a little bit uh, swollen, but you know, I don't think he got him on the button at all. Yeah, got to have the patience. You got to got to show him how to do it, right? Yeah, I don't know. It just takes time. To, it took me a long time to to start figuring out where to, you know, how to set it up, and and you know, timing's everything in, in the sport. Mm -hmm. And then you, of course, have a win over Rusumar Pajares. He took on Alan Belcher, and uh, Alan looked great, but you didn't have to play footsie like he did. Were you impressed that he was able to avoid the leg locks? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, Paul Harris is definitely dangerous in, on the ground, and, and, you know, when I fought him, you know, he had one fight in the UFC that was real quick and, and didn't know anything about him, really, uh, other than he was nasty on the ground with a lot of leg locks and, and, and like to finish him hard and break stuff. So I was real, real careful on the ground with him and probably a little more careful than I, I needed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't allow me to finish. I knocked him down two, three times, but kind of didn't, Why didn't go, go and finish zone. him because of, uh, you know, the danger I possibly put myself in. And, you know, he took me down once or twice and, and did try to fall to some leg locks and, and I just kept it a lot, a lot more, uh, Little safer than than that. He was. I thought maybe at one point he, he might have been able to get uh, Belcher in in one of those, but he did a nice job coming out of it, and, and uh, you know, I rocked him pretty well on the ground. Yeah, it's nice to see the impressive performance from Alan Belcher. Very likable guy. Well, moving on now. Of course, you were in Atlanta with me down there, at UFC 145, when uh, Jones took on Ra Rashad Evans, went all five rounds with with Jones imposing his will. I would say. What did you think? What were the surprising things to you about the fight? I think the most surprising was just what Rashad didn't do, not what not what Jones did do. It was more of what Rashad didn't do or didn't attempt. You know, he just kind of went out there. First round, he, he kind of mixed it up a little bit more, but still didn't get offensive with his wrestling at all. Didn't try to set it up. Didn't didn't try to control the fight a little bit. And, you know, with it, with his wrestling, and, you know, he's he's got a really good wrestling base that he didn't try to utilize. And with Jones trying to hit you in the face so much, you know, there was some definitely some openings where he could have capitalized, but Rashad didn't really try to, and, and 
that's what surprised me the most is uh, is that Rashad just fought John Jones's fight, you know, and, and Jones didn't finish him, but you know, I th I felt that there was maybe one or two opportunities where he could have really pressured him and, and you know maybe finished him. Yeah, he seemed content to just cruise to the victory there. And like you said, I was surprised as well. You're used to seeing Rashad, you know, these explosive takedowns across the ring. Is that the reason why you said you think Jones is a better matchup for you than Evans would have been? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't... Uh, it, it's tougher to really try and knock somebody out or, or be aggressive with your knockouts when the guy just wants to put you on your back. And, you know, Rashad wouldn't have just tried to do that with me. But he likes to stand up and trade as well, but... Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he does fight smart most of the time, and, and, and uh, that's probably what he would have been doing with me and would have made the fight a little bit tougher, I think, for me than, than somebody that's going to stand up and, and exchange with me. And, you know, you know Jones is a, is a totally different uh, challenge. Yeah. Rashad was able to land a couple of big right hands, though. Is that something that you, looking back, are like, oh, that's good? I'd I can get my shot in it. And that's pretty much the game plan was for him to take the takedowns, I would think, and land that overhand right. So what do you think about that? Does that give you confidence? Uh, you know, I, I think anybody can be hit. You just got to set it up in the right way or, or get your timing right. And, and you know, even, even as long as he is, he's still going to be you know, at some point coming within reach. And, and you just have to capitalize on that or, or get him to where you can, you can you can hit him. We've heard September 1st now rumored, or Labor Day weekend, for your fight with John Jones. Uh, UFC 151, it would likely be. You obviously prefer to date sooner, it seemed like, from what I heard. You yeah. wanted to go in July already, but will that date be sufficient for you? Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, way out of the question. It's not like it's the end of the year, but, uh, you know, for me, I was just hoping to spend the summer with my kids, but, you know, instead I'll be spending it in the gym. You got some great up-and-coming guys here at Team Quest uh, that you're sort of mentoring. Like you say, you don't like to play babysitter, but you got Dave Herman, Tarek Safadi, and Virgil Zwicker. Talk about the, the team that you developed here at Team Quest. Uh, you know, it's a good group of guys, and, and you know they're they're talented in different ways, and, and uh, you know everybody comes together, learns from each other, and, and uh, you know we we push each other fairly well in practice. So it's 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 good to have those kind of training partners, you know. In, in here day in and day out and just kind of helping each other for, to prepare for fights. The youthful energy, I guess, helps you, <laughs> helps you, I guess, get ready for yours? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's, it's hard to keep up with them and it's, it's a tough thing because I'm getting a little older. I don't do as much as I used to do um, and I don't have to do as much as I used to do as long as I get my conditioning where it is, where it needs to be for a fight. You know, that's, that's my biggest goal and uh, you know, so it's tough to tell these guys to do do more than what I'm doing, but you know they're younger, not as experienced, and and sometimes you know they need to yeah they need to bust their ass a little bit more. Also in the house is Ovin St. Prue. He will be helping Virgil Zwicker get ready for his return to Strike Force May 19th, and uh, here's a few words with each of those guys. Spencer Lazar here at Team Quest alongside Virgil Zwicker. You've got a fight coming up May 19th, Strike Force, the heavyweight Grand Prix is the uh, headliner of that card. You're fighting Guto Innocente. What do you know about uh, this guy? Obviously, you said a, a good striker. Very good striker, world-class striker. Uh, supposed to be a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Tough, very tough opponent, big guy. Um, looks like it's gonna be you know, tough fight you know, all over the place. He looks very gamed and uh, comes from the Black Azillion, so you know, I'm, I'm ready for him. How has your training been? Anything specific that you can talk about for, for this guy? <clears throat> Uh, I've been working on my conditioning, my wrestling, you know, mixing it up everywhere. Training's been awesome. I've, uh, I've, you know, been going to all kinds of different gyms, bringing in a lot of different guys, and uh, feel great, feel great, ready to go. So safe to say you've been utilizing the time off, of course, to improve your skill set in all areas. Yes, definitely, definitely using the time. Um, you know, I hired an awesome uh, uh, nutritionist, Elite Fitness, and uh, they, you know, they've 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 been working around me around the clock, just get, getting my 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 metabolism, everything ready to go. And uh, feel feel awesome, um, you know. Brought in uh, Saint Prue, come help me. Uh, Dan, of course, Jesse, everyone, all all the guys at Team Quest have been just great team around me. Got my, my strength coach Kevin Duenas at uh, Dynamic Fitness, bring you know bringing the pain to me. So it's been awesome. Uh, my coach, my main coach uh, Billy Shivey, has been been on me and and keeping me keeping me focused and got a great game plan for this guy. 
Spencer Lazara here at Team Quest with a visiting Ovin St. Pru. You're out here helping Virgil Zwicker get ready for his uh, Strike Force fight May 19th. How's he looking? Uh, how much confidence do you have in this guy going into a pretty tough fight? Um, I definitely got a lot of confidence in Virgil. I mean, he's looking really good right now. Died in really good. I mean, he said he's the lightest he's been today. And I mean, he, he, I mean, he's just looking real good right now. Striking is definitely on point. Um, wrestling is in po on point. Cardio level is on point. I mean, right now, um, I feel like he, he, he's ready. I know he's ready. What are your goals moving forward? What kind of fights are you looking for? I'm sure July or August is in the cards for you for your return. Um, definitely. Um, I, my goal right now is just keep on doing what I'm doing. I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm still, um, I guess, in the hunt for the, for the title shot. I just need to keep on doing what I'm doing. Um, come out with my next fight, and I'm going to definitely put on a show with my next fight. Who do you think will win the, the fight between Mike Kyle and uh, Feja? Well, I don't know. Mike Kyle got, a, got, got one up on him. Mike Kyle did beat him already. But, you know, it, it, it's one of them things. It happened probably, what, two years ago? So Feja is definitely a different fighter. Um, Mike Kyle definitely got the knockout power, heavy hands and stuff, and and he he definitely can go three rounds. He did it before, but uh, I really don't know. I mean, um, I'm thanking Mike Kyle just because uh, um, beat him already. He knows Fajal, and uh, Mike. I think Mike Kyle is more uh, experienced than uh, Fajal is. Upcoming events for the UFC is UFC on Fuel Three going down May 15th in Fairfax, Virginia, headlined by featherweights. Dustin Poye and the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jun. Kid is legit. What do you what do you think about Dustin Poye? Have you seen any any of him? Not a whole lot. You know, a little bit. I think, uh, you know, I, from what I've seen, he's, he's pretty aggressive. So talented be, kid. Be, I've, I've be been be watching him for a while. Yeah. I said he's going to get to this title shot. And he wants one more fight apparently before, but that, that should be a good one. They should bang it out a little yeah, bit. You shouldn't be overly. Uh, impatient when, when it comes to that you want to make uh, your title shot count make sure you're ready so yeah also on the card is Amir Sadala taking on Jorge Lopez and a Donald Cowboy Cerrone against hard-hitting veteran of the UFC Jeremy Stevens yeah what do you think about any of those guys you know much about any of those guys yeah a little bit I think you know Sir Cowboy Cerrone he's always entertaining to watch and sometimes frustrating to watch you know <laughs> it's it's you know he's he he can win most of the fights he's in and should win some of the ones he loses and and uh you know uh he's a good dude and hopefully he does well but uh you know he's got a tough opponent so we'll see yeah may 19th then is the strike force heavyweight grand prix and the stomping grounds that you once uh, held there and at the hp pavilion in san jose Josh Barnett takes on Daniel Cormier, co-headlined by uh, Gilbert Melendez, Josh Thompson. And then, of course, we have the UFC 146 the following weekend, Memorial Day weekend, in Las Vegas, Nevada, with the all-heavyweight main card. Alistair Overeem's uh, departure from this card makes it a little less intriguing, I would say. But what are your thoughts on him? He's one of the few guys you didn't fight over in Japan. Uh, he's definitely, you know, when I was in, in Pride and when he was first there, for a few years, he was, you know, 215 pounds, 220 pounds, and just kind of a tall, skinny uh, guy fighting 205. And, and uh, I didn't see him for a couple of years, and all of a sudden he was 265, 270, and ripped. So, you know, it, it, it's uh, he, he's obviously probably uh, done some some things that, that to help him out and get, gain some size, but you know, it, I think it's it's great for the sport to have random drug testing and, and you know I'm definitely an advocate for that of that yeah who do you think will win those those heavyweight fights Junior Dos Santos first Frank Mir of course and uh, heavyweight Grand Prix uh, you know Dos Santos definitely looks like he hits hard and, and uh, scrambles well and, and you know Frank Mir's no slouch on, on, on his feet either and, and he's got some size and, and very very good on the ground as well so and you know, he's a guy you can never count out of a fight, but you know, sometimes when when he when Frank Mears gets pressured uh, with strikes, you know, he doesn't do the best. So I think yeah. uh, that could make the difference in the fight. And what about Bar Barnett and uh, Cormier? You know, it's that's a really tough one to call. I mean, Josh Barnett's got a ton of experience and been around a long time, well-rounded. He's good on his feet, very good on the ground. And, and uh, you know, Cormier is, you know, still coming into his own, still improving and still learning and still trying to get more experience. But he's, you know, Olympic cl caliber wrestler and, and uh, 
you know, that, that hits hard. So it, he's, he's a guy that, that definitely could, could knock Josh out. Yeah. But, you know, Josh has, has got so much experience that's going to be tough for him to do. And if he puts Josh on his back, he, you know, he's in trouble there too. So, you know, it's a tough one to call for me. Great stuff. Okay, and uh, part two of MMA today, we'll be delving deep into the legendary career of the man next to me, Dan Henderson, and when the H-bomb first dropped on an opponent. Hey, we're the Tachi Palace Ring Girls. Check out ProBoxingSupplies.com for all of your MMA needs. That boom box in the backyard, guys. That boom box in the backyard, guys. Godspeed and party on.